More, maybe equally apropos to these young budding scientists' thoughts about their career, what do you do, or what did you do, what should they do, if you start out in a program after having chosen it very carefully and being very excited about it, and then things don't work out? At what point do you just try harder, and at what point do you, do you cash it in and go somewhere else? I started graduate school, not at Columbia University, where this story unfolded. I started at the University of Texas. As a graduate student at that institution, I had a fellowship to attend. Graduate students had access to large telescopes in ways that attending other universities you would not. So you get good telescope access. It had some good theorists there. And uh, so I had high expectations for that program. And rather than rehashing other complexities about my life as a graduate student, which was unorthodox. I, I was a really different kind of student. My portfolio of activities included a lot of things that was not a graduate student. And I did that in high school and college. One, I wrestled, for example, I also rode crew. And I did, did stuff. I even da I danced, okay? And I danced uh, ballet and modern and um, international Latin ballroom, competitive Latin ballroom. And so I might be able to still do that. Let me see. I can still do it. Let me see. Uh, you're, 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 not, you're not going to appear. Yeah, there we go. I'll still do that. Okay. So, I, I'm just going to interrupt you yeah. long enough to say that I just thought of a new meaning for, for dancing with the star. Star. There you go. There you go. So, I had all these activities that I pursued. What I didn't know was that I was expected to drop them all and only give 100% of my life to the lab. Again, it's the figurative lab. And I was uncomfortable doing that. I was worried that all of a sudden I would no longer be all that I was. I'd have to be something else. And it was quite distressing for me. The rest of what I was was my identity. To say, cut all that out, never leave the lab. I didn't, if that's what I needed to be an astrophysicist, which was coursing through my veins since age nine, I said, all right, I guess I'm going to have to just change my personality as uncomfortable a decision as that was. And so I changed my personality, made it less gregarious, less socialized, less, and I just kind of became this hermit. And I found out that the opinions of those in judgment of me, because graduate school is all about the judgment the faculty has on your promise and performance as a future scientist. It's all about that. It's not about anything but that. They're all trying to make a judgment about what you will be and what kind of scientist you'll be. And so what I then learned is that they had already assessed my likelihood of success based on the two years that I had to sort of shed myself. In other words, they were imprinted with who they thought I already was. So uh, when I had problems with my advisor and committee, I said, it's time for me to transfer <laughs> my program. So, oh, by the way, there's a, there's a point where they dissolved my committee. And, the, and then I appealed it. And they said, okay. So my committee is basically kicking you out of graduate school. I appealed it. And they said, okay, you can come back, but you have to start an entire new PhD thesis with a whole different advisor. Because the advisor relationship wasn't working. As well as all the rest of this. And then they said things like, now think carefully before you do this. This would be another five years of toil and, and then I realized, I realized this, <laughs> they're trying to taunt me on the premise that the toil you invest in getting a PhD is somehow something to avoid, somehow that that's bad, when in fact that is the scientific enterprise. Your PhD is just your first big research project that we expect many more of of you down the line. Yet they said this to me as though I was going to say, oh, more work, more research, I better not. Let me find something else to do. <laughs> and some of, the advice, some of the other advisors, thinking they're doing me a favor, said, you know, you have this personality, why don't you become a computer salesman? I know some people who work for computers, you could become, then they're trying to do me a favor 
by getting me out of their community. And I didn't mean to push on you like that, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. So I said to myself, if I'm going to have to do a whole new PhD, it's not going to be at this institution. If it's got to be fresh, I might as well be fresh in another place. And that's when I knocked on doors. Uh, there were faculty that had seen me deliver papers, uh, oral papers and poster papers at our society conferences, the American Astronomical Society. And I said very something very simple. He was the chairman of the department at Columbia. I said, circumstances are such that I need to transfer my graduate program. Will you consider taking me as a student? That sentence is sufficiently understood by anyone in a graduate school environment that he didn't say to me, well, what happened with your advice? Tell me. Give me the details. Why did it? It's like it wasn't working out. And the fact that I was still on my feet and still knocking on doors, that told him something right away. But not only that, he had seen me. He had had scientific conversations with me. So it helped that I was visible at conferences. It helped that I was speaking to other scientists about their work, about my work. You had a network. Yes. Outside of the one that was tarnished. And so he said, the least we, we can, should make you do is take the general exam, which is just the, uh, the textbook learned subject, so that they can say he's with everybody else yeah. in the school. And then I transferred in for, directly for the PhD, um, skipping the master's. And, um, and it was just a completely different environment, as well as different. a fresh start. And I got right? to, it's basically the fresh start. And so you know what it was? It was lost income because it was, the time was delayed before I would get the PhD and get PhD level income. But it was not lost professional development because I had an expertise germinated in the previous PhD that I had been writing and I actually had published uh, two papers based on that thesis. But now I had a whole other thesis in a whole other subject area. So as a result, as they say, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger, I had a greater breadth in my depth of understanding of astrophysics as a freshly minted PhD student. And immediately after graduation, I was offered a postdoc at Princeton University. And that's, which has a, a leading astrophysics department. So I can tell you that in the end, what matters more than anything, it matters even more than how smart you are, is how strong is and how deep is your ambition. Because no one ever said graduate school is going to be easy. No one even said that there's this trajectory you follow, and if you just do that, everything will be fine. Because graduate school, you have to have relationships with people who stand between you and the success of your career. It's got to work. It's got to be fertile. It's got to, they've got to respect your intellect. It, it, and it's going to be hard work, yes. That's why you're doing it. You're not doing it because it's easy. You're doing it because it's hard. If you did it because it was easy, everybody would have done it. And then you'd have no distinction about what it is you were pursuing for yourself in this enterprise, this great enterprise we call research science. So while they were telling me to be the computer salesman, while I had, was being kicked out of graduate school, there was a point where I was in my parents' basement without an academic affiliation, something that I had had and maybe even taken for granted my whole life, without a job, you know, how, low can, can it, how much lower can you get? You kicked out of school, you don't know if you're going to get into another school. Your life's ambition. This is not just something that I discovered in college because astrophysics was early in the alphabet in the course catalog. <laughs> you know, it was something that was deep within me. And I needed those reserves. I needed the support from my family. That was a subject that came up this morning. Support from loved ones. It's all part of the reserve of energy. And these are the challenges. By the way, some people have it easier than others. You might luck out with a good advisor. But don't assume that just because you have overlapping research interests that the, the interpersonal relationship will work. 